Okay, it's been a very enjoyable morning so ta- so far. I'm on Lake Atalan in the city of Panahachel, which is one of the best places to find food on the lake. Okay, it has it's one of the business centers. Um, it's also one of the expat centers, and um, I'm I'm going to talk about community today. It's a really important issue to me uh, because I realized the longer I travel, I've been traveling for 26 years. And I don't have a home. I, I travel all the time. And uh, I live in each place where I'm at. And I, I have learned that, it, you know, it's kind of funny. We don't always know what's important to us, right? But the longer I travel, the more I realize that community is the reason one of the – it is the reason why I travel, okay? Any way I do it, it's the number one reason. I call it the uh, – I have a lot of names for it. I'm going to, I just wrote an article about it. Um, I'm writing a book called The Philosophy Of, and uh, (laughs) it's kind of funny because the philosophy of different subjects, and I'm going to make a series of books, and I've been working on what what to write. Oh, this guy started pounding. (laughs) Why am I in the cemetery? Well, I'm in the cemetery hoping to find a quiet place. It's 6.30 in the morning. And I've been ha- I had a great time coming here because I was in a tuk-tuk shared with a tuk-tuk driver and a, a lady that has a business on the beach at 6.35 in the morning, a.m. And there was, 11, I said, I'm afraid of the dogs. And oh, they go, they, they act like there's no problem with dogs. The one lady sort of said yes, but, and then we saw 11 dogs in the street outside of here. <laughs> I'm afraid of dogs packs of dogs and people get so angry at me because I tell them the truth you know who's the most in- hated person in any community it's the honest people <laughs> okay uh, everybody's got all these little proclivities and they want you to keep them quiet you're never supposed to notice these things right like there's too many dogs here okay but I'm in Panahachel, Guatemala which has been a place where I've came to for community almost probably 12 maybe 15 times I don't really know okay it in the past when I first came here it was um, very much a community of young backpackers then it turned into a community more of expats and less backpackers then San Pedro on the cross the lake is still full of backpackers but the backpackers are no longer um, community okay used to be you I was members of a community but I'll try to try to uh, I wrote this article, and I send it out to se- a select group of people I, when I write one. I'm writing about two or three a week. And I'll start publishing these books in paper, right? I'm not sure if I'm going to do them. And um, There's a real problem with um, reading books on, uh, you know, on, on phones or pads or anything like that. You really miss the thing, and you're always tempted to go do something else. Um, but, but readers are learners, and readers are leaders. Um, I'll try to tell you some of the main things here. Community form when more than two people gather, look and listen to each other. That's the community in my definition. And this chapter is called The Philosophy of Communities. Okay, communities form when more than two people gather, look, and listen to each other. Eye contact fosters bonds and mutual respect. Allowing on top Eye contact is a sign of respect for each other. If you're not having contact in a meeting of the minds with somebody, um, you're not really part of a community, okay? <laughs> and this is why um, I had I was the CEO of a social network, and the goal was, I said continually, the goal is not to, the goal was to meet online so you can meet in person. <laughs> It don't work that way. People get a better. It's really sad, okay? Uh, But I think, I thank the good gods that, and I am grateful to have participated in hundreds of communities situated around the wonderful world we live in. I like to, I have different names for this. I like to call it the traveler huddle, a group of people that get together and sort of talk to each other. I like to call it the center of the backpackers universe. That's when a bunch of backpackers just all have, get together. I like to call it the center of the expat universe. That's when the local people that are living abroad get together at a coffee shop. We used to have one kind of on Saturday here on Lake Atalan at the Palapa 
where they got together to eat. They, they still have one on the other side of the lake, which is about the only expat community that I can find on this lake in the last year. It's 2024. You've got to see it. It's, there's irrelevance. Okay. But they also have the uh, morning coffee shop group. And... Um, but you can see that some of the examples of this is like the uh, television show Friends, where they get together in that coffee shop and they all sit at this couch. And they, that is a community. Um, they look at each other and they listen to each other. And they have mutual respect. What other one? Oh, the TV show Cheers. Cheers is a good example where everybody knows your name, right? That's a, what, what a great thing. And if you watch TV shows, you'll realize that all of them, <laughs> I don't know if a TV series can have a TV series without community. <laughs> I was watching this dark um, Gene Roddenberry show called Andromeda, and he formed his little community on his ship. Community is radically, extremely important. And I'm very, very worried right now because uh, I the community was not a problem before the invention of the car. Okay, before the car, people naturally, and, and we had all this broadcasted knowledge. Before the car and the television, probably the television has created so many stereotypes of what, or archetypes of what a community should be, that they have destroyed communities. Okay, you watch TV shows, and they, they act like things... I, there's many, many things that are contradictory to a community. First of all, is that you are going to, you have to have a reason to go join a community. That's kind of crazy. A community is just, you just wander uptown and talk with the people, right? I grew up in Orland, Indiana, where I went up to the gas station. We sit around and talk to about anybody and everybody, right? But we didn't have to worry about radical attacks on each other. It didn't happen when I was a kid. This radical attacks where somebody, don't, don't get me wrong, we had all these old people or young people or these dinglings or these jerks that would scream at people. And it's, it's normal. <laughs> but it really wasn't accepted in the groups. But the car and the television has caused stereotypes to exist. We have these stereotypal typal groups, these ideal situations where people think that Everybody should be part of like this, right? Excuse me. Oh. <clears throat> I'm cold. I don't think that's making me. But I'm, I'm radically, I'm really, really upset at the breakdown in the community because all my family, all my friends, and everybody I know is coming up with these statements that destroy communities. And they adhere to these comments, and they, they don't realize that this is an all-or-nothing statement that excludes. I don't want inclusion. Don't get me wrong. I think that you shouldn't in include the radical deviants, right? I think the radical deviants, like the transgender people or the, I mean, radically obese people, need to come into the group by being acceptable to the group. Okay, you have this highly deviant people that are not uh, part of any group. They can form their own groups, whatever, but they can't control the major groups. Okay, but uh, this, some of these things can be very harsh, what I'm saying, and I don't want you to take them as being uh, all or nothing. These are not rules. These are just guidelines. A philosophy is never a hardcore rule, and there's when they come up with all these terminologies, like I was watching this... Aristotle thing on ethos, pathos, and whatever, and it was coming up with a teacher's rendition of communication, okay, and they give you this guideline, and people grasp onto what the teacher says, and then they, ha they make a stereotypical way that life could exist. That's not the way life is. Life is you go up there, and people have, they change the rules every day of the week. You can't, uh, in, in a community that is accepting and forgiving of people, Everybody's forgiven, okay? Um, but uh, what really made this, started this actual video I'm making right now is I, I just left uh, uh, Columbia where I was part of a community and, you know, you can instantly become part of a community, most communities, okay? 
Um, even even in the incredibly Islamic states or whatever, you can become community. You can be part of the community. It's more difficult, but you can always become part of the community of the hotel. Okay, I'm always if I'm not in a community at a hotel, I don't want to be in the hotel. If there is no community in the hotel, I'm saying, why am I living there? Okay, if I'm going to live there for the swimming pool and the uh, I don't know. I don't know the television. I think I uh, I have a personal problem. Okay, uh, but um, community forms when there's two or more people. Now, everybody wants to define community. That's all it is. Is two or more people are talking, kind of with mutual respect. They're not in attack mode. Okay. When they, they're looking at each other's eyes, and they're reading when they accidentally say, like I talked to this guy that obviously has no capacity for community, and he uh, said some very attacking things, but then he apologized. I was really kind of proud of him. But there, the reason why I'm here is I just left Colombia, where the, I was in this community that was supernatural, like an act of God. I'd never seen a community like this, right? And I came back here to where I used to always have community. I used to sit with James Easter. He's about 80-something now, and he left. And all the community's gone. I cannot, I go out, as a rule of thumb, I walk, go for a walk to try to be part of communities, probably minimum of three times, but maybe up to eight times in a day. And I, I do it at, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can find a lot of communities inside restaurants. Okay, I have a couple little restaurants where I got a community, can't really call it a community. Me and the owners are friends, right? Uh, Commodore Delicia in front of the Dispensa Familiar. I really like the lady. And I get to kind of say hi to her, but we don't really talk. We just share time together. And that's kind of community, but... Um, I'm very upset because I would have considered Lake Athlon one of the best communities that I've ever been in. And right now, since COVID-19, which um, I cannot find any anybody but uh, people that are, uh, I don't know what you want to call these people. Uh, they, they really hate people, but they may sit in a coffee shop once in a while. Uh, they have no use for people. They, they're going to instantly start talking about all the problems of the planet and they really can't see that this is not how to win friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie wrote a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I wrote a book how to how to meet strangers and how to meet people and turn them into strangers. Because he didn't he kind of in the book he kind of um, assumes that you're already met them and I think that I wrote the chapter before that like how to open a conversation. And I'm I consider myself an expert at opening conversation. And then I'm also an expert at maintaining a relationship. <laughs> but there are people that you should break relationships with because if they're in attack mode or you enable them by listening to their rants and their screaming and their, I mean, when a person starts getting really angry and they go on the same subject like this is a problem, like I had a man tell me this is a problem with women, this is a problem with women, I was sitting in a Mr. John's here, and I go, ding, 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 10 comments in a row of what was wrong with women. I go, I said, hey, this is kind of a trauma, <laughs> okay? And he goes, yeah, he admitted it was a trauma, but, you know, he'd been divorced for a long time, and he never resolved the trauma, but he gave himself permission to delve into the anger he had at his wife, and this is, this is the problem right now, and divorce is the number one problem with communities right now. Um, but I've participated in hundreds of communities, coffee shops, whatever. When I first started traveling, and one of the reasons I started traveling is because I was involved in, okay, I was involved, let's see if I can find it. I was involved in about, I, I have a list of 10. I was probably involved in 20 different communities in Fort Wayne. I, I've never had a shortage of communities in my whole life. Uh, weekly on Friday, I'd go to Paula's place and we'd sit around this yuppie bar and talk to everybody. The Chamber of Commerce meetings. Uh, my company had two to 15 employees, so that was a community. Most people don't believe know it, but they're part of a community at work. And then when they leave that community and they retire, they're going to have trouble. You should not retire unless you have four or five different 
third place is where you go to to hang out because that community, without that community to work, you know, often people are very alone. Uh, my family get-togethers, O'Sullivan's Spire, always laughed. We would go down to O'Sullivan's. O'Sullivan's had the best pizza I ever ate. It was, but it was served really easily at between midnight and 2 a.m. in the morning. We'd all go after the bars, and the, and uh, I still have dreams of these uh, pizzas because it was so good. They give you this big slice, and everybody would sit around and sing this song, Why Don't We Get Drunk and Screw. I know that was crude, but it was funny. Okay, the Fort Wayne Ski Club, um, the Dash Inn uh, Coffee Shop in the center of Fort Wayne, the health club. I would go to the health club every day of the week, and I highly, 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 I, there's no better place to have a social life than at the health club. Everybody is in the uh, process of becoming a better person, and they have purpose and meaning, and they are trying to become a better person. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. I would go to, you know, I still, when I'm in the United States, I still go to Alcoholics Anonymous, kind of like happy hour, just for something to do, to go hang out with the people. Then we go drink coffee afterwards. There's, and really, they say there's two meetings, the, the meeting at the coffee shop, the meeting at the meeting, and then the meeting afterwards. And often the meeting afterwards is much more thing. And they, they have this no crosstalk thing in AAA, which is really brilliant because you can't you can't sit there and start talking about another person's thing. You have to say, I have this problem. I did this. And really, some wisdom things. But uh, the Crow's Nest Yacht Club, I I was a member, but I was a member of many many social clubs. But why did I start traveling? I went on a six week vacation to Pia de la Cuesta, Mexico, and um, when I was there. I had been there when I was about, oh, 26 on a, on a long two-month drunk, and I, I laid on the beach and thought about the realities of life. I, li I was sleeping in a, in a uh, what do you call it? I slept in a hammock, okay? I drove down with this guy that was the opposite of uh, human. I met him in AA up in Midland, Michigan, but he was, oh, man, he didn't like people. Okay, a lot of people just are committed to the fact that they don't like people. And they will say it, I don't like people. When you talk to when you hear that, believe it, okay? Okay, they no, that's never the truth, but they, they will say that as if uh, stay away from me. But that's not a good thing. But premeditated communities, I, I have if I can't find a community, I try to form one. So I've been going to the coffee shops. I've even made videos where I said I'm me. I'm coming to uh, the, the, you know, the Kitsch or the, the Santander Munchies. Right now it would be where Munchies is. And uh, the, guy, the guy in Kitsch, he, he moved his coffee shop across the street behind a thing and he just destroyed his business. He didn't have any clue that he had a community. Used to be there would be 5 to 15 people there all the time. He didn't even understand his business. But now Munchies is really a good place, but she, she don't open till 8 o'clock. Uh, Kitsch was smart enough for some reason to open at 6, and the other one that opens at 6 is really um, just not very good community. They have a little bit of a local community. But community is when two or more people, more than two people, meet and they have respect to each other and they just start talking. That's all it takes. This idea that we have to define the community is the opposite of community. Communities break apart the minute you start having rules. I, in AA, the only rule for membership is the desire to stop drinking. You don't have to quit drinking. You just have to have a desire to quit. That's the only requirement for membership. And the word membership is a problem. But I, I premeditated look for communities. That's all I do. Okay, I go from place to place to place. Cal Sand Road, I call the center of the backpacker universe. But COVID-19 has uh, conditioned people to believe that they shouldn't leave the house. And this is destroying the planet. And the, um, the medical industry, I believe, is, and uh, maybe the political parties are bound to determine, it's kind of like Hitler. See, Hitler had a common enemy of the Jew, right? And he started killing them. And that does form a group, okay? But on the other side is everybody's looking for the con common enemy right now. And that's...
just not the way it's supposed to be, guys. You're not supposed to hate people that are uh, voting for Biden. You're not supposed to hate people that think vote for Trump. You're not supposed to hate anybody. You're really not supposed to take politics serious, okay? Uh, there are a bunch of politicians that argue with each other to try to uh, separate us into two groups. And, but, you know, and they have to. They have to create the people that support them against the people that they think. But when I cannot find a community, I leave the city. Okay, so I enter a city. If I can't find a community after two or three days, I leave. Even if it even if it's just a small one like the coffee shop where I eat breakfast every day. I, I actively try to go to places where they have um, – I, I instantly try to become a regular at a restaurant. Like right now, I'm kind of a regular at about 11 o'clock in the morning at the uh, Commodore Delicia in front of the Dispensa Familia because they have a nice piece of beef, a lot smaller than the one I was eating in uh, Colombia, and it cost, I don't know – two dollars okay served with uh, four tortillas uh, but I go to the the Italian coffee shop in Hardin de Americas nobody's there I go to uh, Monchi's nobody's there I'll be the only person there I can go there four times a day and nobody will be there I can go to the Hardin de Americas Italian place and there may be two people once in a while randomly there will be a group of five or six Sometimes. I've been looking for Russ. He's never around. He used to be part of the uh, James Easter group. James Easter was a was a person that understood the community. Once he, see, I've gone to a lot of places. Like, I used to go to Lomi Togo and hang around with Sylvan and this guy, uh, oh, I forget his name. But I, I'm still friends with one of them in Germany. But uh, they both left, right? So I stopped going to, to thing. I used to hang out in the... the Hotel Le Galion, and there was a community. Then it, something happened. They got a new owner, and often, oftentimes these hotel owners don't realize there's a community. They don't, they don't see. They think they're selling us a room when they should be selling a community. Um, in a way, where I'm staying at right now has a community, and he has a coffee shop in the morning, and um, he has breakfast, free breakfast included, and he's got a swimming pool. And he's forming a community. Now, and the other problem is that most of the people that are staying there have are the opposite of community. They don't have any use for people. When you meet somebody that has no use for people, makes no eye contact, doesn't talk to anybody, talks, plays in their phone, let them loose. Cut them loose. Give them the boot. <laughs> you don't have to do anything mean. You just got to realize they don't have any friends, right? But... Uh, when I went, went to Pia de la Cuesta, when I first started traveling, it was called Sunset Beach. Okay, every night at sunset, everybody would walk out and watch the sunset. What a great experience to sit around. I did this in Palalum Beach in uh, Goa, India. I've done this. I love beaches where everybody gets together. I, I remember going to uh, Key West, which is, whoa, some deviant situation, right? But at, I would go down to the dock and watch the sunset. It was what a great experience. Everybody start clapping or whatever. I had one of my best experiences ever is this uh, girl in a wraparound skirt walked up to me with just a little bikini top, top on and says, I love you. <laughs> great. Um, but membership is normally the beginning of the end of a community. Anytime you start putting rules. Um, I had, in my business, I had one rule. You show up at 8 o'clock because... Unless I'm going to enforce the rule and kick them out of the uh, business, I, I was I, I realized that every rule is debatable, right? So I had one rule, okay. But um, the social network that I formed, um, we made it so people could exclude people, but they wouldn't do that because they was afraid they was passing judgment, and so. Uh, what it turned into is a bunch of people attacking each other on a daily basis. And social networks are not social, okay? They are meant to be for people to get together and argue. And what they're selling is uh, anger, okay? I mean, you, you see constantly X or Twitter quoting some anger thing or somebody's trying to cancel things. Or when you see some uh, news organization say and. Um, everybody reacted to this comment, and they're, they're celebrating the attack of a person. That's kind of evil, okay? Uh, 
And I realized that for me to keep the social network running, I had to uh, basically embrace the idea that people should get together to attack each other. And they did get together in person, but they still did. It was sad. I mean, it was like everybody was in it, social networks attract people that are not capable of having social interaction one-on-one -on -one looking at somebody's eyes. They don't understand common respect. And you understand, you know, they were raised in a family that had it. I had a, I had a family, mother and father, with five children. So we had a community, right? More than two people getting together to talk and listen to each other and have eye contact. The eye contact's the bond. But my uh, mutual respect, uh, marriage, family, then divorce. Divorce is causing uh, where men refuse to give respect to all women. This is not a good deal, guys. When you guys act like they're the enemy, you just cut your community in half. How can you join any community if it's only going to be a bunch of men playing with each other, that's like this men going their own way. It's like this, it's, to me, it's gay, okay? If you want to hang around with only men, your, your, your true love is men. You love men, and you might as well just form, uh, you know, homosexual relationships, right? Um, you got to get this clear in your mind that women are not the enemy, okay? They are just, your wife is not a representation of all women on the planet, you negotiated badly in your relationship, and please get back in the game because women are great, men are great, men shouldn't hate women. We are not, we are not that much different. We just have a different body shape, right? And all these other genders, I would say, if you're not those other genders, just ignore them, okay? Because they're not really, it's not, you don't have to be part of every community, okay? The biggest goal what I'm talking today is please realize that you as an individual can go find community and there is always a community to join. Don't try to force the play though. Don't think that you have to force a community that is trying to kick you out or ostracize you to, to accept you. I'm not I don't care if anybody here in Lake Athlon accepts me because we got to be with people that like us, just listening to us. I was dating a girl last year, and I finally told her, I said, you don't really like to listen to me. <laughs> okay? She goes, you want me to listen to you? Because I'm a pretty good listener. I can really listen a lot. And uh, I'll do, you know, I, I really, when I have a relationship, I really don't care what we do. I just really want to do things with the, the woman. But she... Uh, she would get really angry when I had when I just talked, and I go, I I really probably dodged a bullet. But she she would lie to people all the time to try to fit in. Lying is the opposite of friendship. If you're going to start, form, form a friendship, you can't lie to anybody, and you can't allow to be around anybody that lies to anybody. That friendships, this idea that being a troll and all this stuff is insanity. Okay, uh, this is the celebration. But you watch TV series like. Uh, Breaking Bad, and they're celebrating evil people right now. These are the heroes of television shows. It's, don't watch those things, right? You want to watch where people are like Star Trek, where they conquer the world or something, or Sheldon, or Big Bang Theory, or Friends, or whatever. When you're watching Breaking Bad, and that's the number one, one of the number one shows. Uh, evil. They're celebrating evil. Uh, the Sopranos. I can't watch this. It's about the celebration of evil people. And this is part of the community breakdown, right? Mutual, mutual respect is when people refrain from attacking comments. I'm sitting there. I got a lady I helped. Uh, she's 79 years old. And she tells me I, I helped her on three different occasions over the last five years buy plane tickets. And she gave me all her, you know, credit card data, her birth date, all this stuff so I could buy the plane ticket. And uh, then what she say the other day, Andy, I don't trust you. And I said to go, what is wrong with you? I wanted, I didn't say anything. I just sort of forgave her instantly because I realized she doesn't know anything about social reaction. But she, she has lost the love of her daughter and heard her daughter no longer talk. 
when, when you talk to somebody, if you want to know if they have any relation, capability of having a, a family or a relationship or they can enter a community, if they are estranged from their children, just say no, really. This is not a person. Uh, when, when a family breaks down, that's almost a signal that this person is going to have emotional problems. Don't get me wrong. There, are, there is a redemption for everybody, but we're... As an individual, I want you to go find a community. I don't want you to care about changing people. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. As people, places, and things. I cannot change people. I have to accept people and places and things as they are. I cannot train workers. I learned a long time ago. It took me about five years before I learned that you don't train workers. A good worker comes in... On, on the run, working good, okay? But if a person cannot refrain from saying despicable comments that are things like uh, the basket of deplorables by Hillary Clinton should have got her ostracized from the United States. I mean, this is absolutely, she has a husband that's absolutely brilliant, President Clinton, and uh, this woman is incapable of doing. Um, but, you know, don't get me wrong, what Joe Biden and Trump say to each other is outrageous. But they're in war, right? They are trying to get you to love their group. And I sometimes understand that. But they're not forming. Uh, Donald Trump didn't become presidential after he became president. Um, when you say things that create, like Obama created racism inside the United States. He celebrated racism. And he has caused this whole racial problem in the United States. We have very little racial problem in the United States. Nobody cares about it. Um, How to Lose Friends and Not Influence People. This is a Dale Carnegie book um, that is very, very good about how to maintain a community or how to contain. How to lose... Oh, I'm making a joke here. How to Win Friends and Influence People is the name of the book, but I've, I've got a list here of how to lose friends and not influence people. <laughs> I was sitting on the, the porch one time in Lake Atalanta, and this, it was Easter, Samana Sana, and this guy comes up there and says, uh, what's, what's going on with the pagan religion today? He said some really re- insulting things to the Catholic religion, and I go, why don't you just say, Throw things at me. I'm a, I'm a jerk. Throw things. I mean, this is just meant to annoy the group, right? And um, I had a guy the other day. Uh, I, I don't know how many people uh, wrote me. My, my one friend in Norway wrote me, and he goes on this thing about uh, Trump's a criminal, blah, blah, blah. And I, I wrote him. I said, and then he says that these people that are, are voting for Trump are idiots. I, I lost this friend, Peter. Because he said he was a gay guy. And I, I called him up just to ask him. He was a real good techie. And I called him up and asked him, what do you think of Trump? He says, well, anybody that would vote for Trump's an idiot. Well, that's not, that's not, he didn't know what I believed, right? I remember talking to a, a politician, the ex-mayor of Fort Wayne. And <clears throat> I talked to him for 30 minutes. I got off the phone. I said, Pretty good I can talk to a Democrat for 30 minutes, and he never learns that I'm not going to vote for his party. Uh, there's a discovery process when we, when we talk, and he says, we cannot assume that everybody agrees with us. And this has become the problem with community. People are assuming that everybody thinks like they do as if they are the correct version of life. But... Uh, there's funny things that happen... I had to stop re- uh, talking with this Norwegian guy. I just blocked him because um, he believes that it's his job to change me. And this is the element of lack of community. Inside a community of more than two people, it is not the job of anybody to convert somebody to some other thing. Don't get, don't get me wrong. It happens. But a lot of people think that an owner of a business is they don't understand that the owner of business is like a philosophical, psychological person 
that brings people together to work together. They don't try to train them. They try to let the person naturally become the person that, that is a good worker, okay? Uh, you can give certain training skills and certain things, and you can have certain requirements to do the job. But the idea of sitting around training somebody to become uh, a good person, <laughs> it just don't work, right? Uh, it's like the more, you know, it's like people, 30 days they obey the union, and the minute they become part of the union, they become a jerk. Unions create a really hostile arrangement between uh, management and the people. Um, and they... The reason for a, a union wouldn't exist if there wasn't a anger between the two two things. But a lot of people just want to be in a union so they can get more money. They don't care anything about the country, company. But the loss, okay, how to how to lose friends and not influence businesses. So I'm going to try to give you a few ideas of the loss of social understanding. This is what we we've lost this ability. See, before the car. Before the television, we just had to go up to the center of the, you know, the, the, the center of the village and talk with people. Uh, the big cities is the opposite. People go to big cities so that they can be alone. Okay? They don't go to big cities to be with people. They go to celebrate um, their self and that they went to this opera or they went to this thing or they went. They don't really care about people. They care about saying who they are. So they're, they're defined externally, not internally. Internal, internally defined people are safe and happy anywhere. Externally happy people have to have something to entertain them. I'm self-entertained. My mother, when she came to Lake Atalan, she reads books all the time. She can live anywhere. I mean, the woman just is self-entertaining. I watch movies a lot. I read books. I can write. I do things I'm self-entertaining. But I'm much better when I'm part of a community. And there is no longer any community in Lake Atalan that I can find. So I have almost zero reason to return, right? Um, I have a lot of re reasons to return to Columbia, where I just came from. It's 2024. I, I cannot highly... I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of men that can come down here and find a cougar and get uh, find a woman that is going to hook on to them. Because they, they, you do walk around. The minute that you're not driving a car, life is better. As a rule, if you're not driving a car, your life's going to be better. So in some ways, maybe New York City, if it's too densely populated, is more sociable. But if you're not willing to say hello to anybody and everybody, and you're afraid of everybody, it's not a good world. Um, when people say they got a gun, I say you got to be smart enough to move away from a place where you need a gun. Don't get me wrong, you can have a gun, but to actually need a gun or feel you need a gun migrate away, especially the United States. Anytime you feel that you're going to be broken into your house or you're going to, to be in danger for the rest of your life, there's no way to live. Sell your house and live. Grow up, okay? Listen up, shut up, and grow up. Um, living when you're in fear is not good. People are afraid of falling down. Okay, uh, 14th step is something I came up with. Don't say or do anything that would make you or other others appear weak. So when you say a comment like you're kind of stupid here or whatever, you, you make them feel weak, right? Um, often you make people feel weak by just being in too good a shape. I mean, I get next to people and I know they're angry at me because they, they are comparing themselves to me uh, and they, they get upset. So generally, I've learned that... Uh, for sure, I get hate mail the minute I say I've been sober for 37 years. Why? Because there's radical numbers, probably, I don't know, 3%, 4% of the United States has went to AA meetings and failed, right? So these 3% go into a thing saying, you're a jerk. And I go, I'm not a jerk. You just was a failure at AA. Not my fault, okay? It's a personal problem. When people get really triggered that don't know me, okay? Uh, when they get really triggered and I say something that makes them, it's a personal problem, okay? And this, anybody that goes into a personal attack on another person in front of you, just say no, okay? Uh, if they can't control their temper, they go into things, you, you have to stand up and walk away. I have a crazy guy here that got really, kept ranting. You know, he's certifiably crazy too. And on Social Security, 
And uh, he went crazy and kept screaming. And I go, stop or I'm going to go leave. And I got, and then he wrote me a message says, in New York, I would beat you to death. <laughs> and I go, gee, this guy, can't you realize that you, he apologized later than the other day. He called up and called me all sorts of names. Personal problems. Okay, people with personal problems. It's not our job. Our job is to be a good example. It's not to change people. Okay, look them into the eyes. If you're not looking at people in the eyes, if you're sitting around and they're playing on their smartphone, you know, kind of shun them, okay? Um, they don't have respect for the group, okay? Um, how do I live my life? The solution to all this is real simple. The goal is to go for a walk like with people walking, not in a car. Don't go to the destination and buy something. You go walking around three to eight times a day in public areas where you do it. You can walk into a coffee shop and become part of a group. Um, my, my one friend has, one guy I know has dementia, and I, I'm trying to get this person to leave the house. They need to go out where they have to behave in a social environment like twice a day. Dementia is caused because they have permission to be crazy in a way. Um, they, they, don't, they lose the ability to, they, they lose their social skills. Okay, so what is destroying the community? Divorce. The idea that we only have two friends in life. I have, I'm not with my friends. I can call up friends and talk to them for a couple of hours. That's really a nice thing. But everybody I meet is my friend. This idea that I've only need two friends is the opposite of what we really need. We need community. Okay. Everyone can be a different type of friend on a different level. I even have friends where I just nod at them, but I don't really want to talk to them, right? Community friendship is much more valuable than one friend. Community friendship is more valuable than having one friend. Uh, dogs, pets um, are becoming the only friend that people have. Uh, when people are talking to their dog as if they're a human, I'm worried. Why? Um, they're, they're, they're talking to themselves, right? Which is kind of therapeutic. But on the other side is they've, they've given up on the idea of people. And when you give up on people and go to dogs, there's this guy on the, you know, I don't know, Lawrence that said he had an intimate relationship with his animals. And I was about, he made a comment on the social ball, and I was like laughing because an intimate relationship with a dog. Intimacy is the reason for living, and intimate relationships with dogs is kind of scary. Okay, but this idea, that, nothing wrong with animals, nothing wrong with pets. It's the idea that you put them more important than humans. Social networks are destroying the fabric of society. And um, these guys know how to socially manipulate. Instagram, WhatsApp, X, all these organizations know how to manipulate your brain. And they sell, it's basically by screwing with your head. It's a science. Uh, voicing angry words out loud. If you hear a person, especially when they're over, I don't know, 25 years old, and they're screaming in an angry tone of voice, they don't, they haven't learned their social skills, okay? So you gotta, as an individual, I don't care about the group. I want you to be a happy person and find a community, okay? So the only way to do it is to know some of the problems. That's a problem. When somebody believes that they have the right to scream, rant, argue in open out loud they are defining who they are the hardcore joining of tribes um, when you don't allow somebody to be a member of a group like i'm a member of well that's it the only requirement for membership of aa is the desire to quit drinking i'm a member but you know there is no card or anything like that right it's anonymous uh, but when somebody doesn't have the right to be different, if they can't believe different, like if I don't give a right to be, I, I give everybody to be the right to be anything they want to be. If they want to be, I don't know, homosexual, lesbian, uh, Biden support, that's okay. I don't care. 
but I also have the right to not listen to them, okay? And this is where people get really screwed up. They think that they have to be complicit and agree. <laughs> you just have to listen and go do something else. Um, it, when somebody forces me to agree with their form of life, um, that's really extremely tyrannical, macho, uh, control freaks, right? So I have to agree that this is okay. No, that, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to agree that anything is okay. Okay, I can have an Andy that has a, a community of one. But there's comments like absolute, like all people do this or all people do that. I do this all the time and I accidentally, I'm trying to remove it. I was told in university when I was 21, there are no absolutes and I still haven't learned. I got a friend, um, Steve, that always, whenever I say a, uh, an all thing. He, I sit there and I go, guy, you know what I mean, and I understand you correcting me. And I, I'm, if you want, if I wanted to speak to a group where everybody cared about what I said, um, you know, um, Adam Smith said, sympathetic listening is when you listen to somebody and you try to understand their intention and try to figure, instead of trying to figure out what's wrong with what they're saying. Everybody right now is trying to figure out that one thing you're saying wrong so they can jump in and tell you you're wrong. That is not the way to listen, guys. If you're listening, try to think of that comment that is diplomatic that could give another perspective if you really want to help your friend. Driving cars and motorcycles is the opposite of friendship. The minute people come to expats, get abroad, they buy a car and motorcycle, and they don't understand that they just destroyed the place where they loved. People instantly move out of the hotel that had a community and move into an apartment, and they destroy what they love. I watched uh, Gene here. He was in love with Lake Atalan. He was in San Pedro for two or three years living in a hotel. He gets an apartment here in Panachel. Then he buys a motorcycle. He ended up moving away because he destroyed his community. But he would always say, well, I don't need people. Everybody needs people. Driving cars and living in apartments is to destroy community. Uh, this guy the other day said he didn't want to talk to the... This was kind of interesting. He said he wanted the, the ladies in the... Um, the two women working in my hotel to, to be professional and not be his friend. And I go, what? The, I don't know. Clue. He's, he's got a problem with women, right? Um, driving to a destination, shopping and returning home is not leaving the house. Driving to a destination to walk around. I often take a tuk-tuk. Like I took a tuk-tuk, uh, paid 5Q, 80 cents to go to a different community part of the community, right? So I often take taxis to, to just go to a different place to explore for more community, to kind of mine, do a mining trip. I'm mining for friends, right? Uh, people that are proud to work 12 to 16 hours a day, um, they really are on the wrong path. Don't get me wrong, they may, they may be building society and doing that stuff. I mean, Bill Gates and uh, Elon Musk are bragging about having five minutes uh, appointments. And I go, don't make this part of this. I mean, uh, uh, Ferris, Tom, what is his name? Ferris, the four-hour work week. He, he, he kept teaching people how to manipulate the situation to play with the rules. That's not the way to form a community. That is not the way to be friends with someone. That's a highly manipulate, manipu, manipulative thing. He didn't, he didn't write the book for our work week because he wanted people to work four hours. He wanted to have a title that sold it. Honesty and transparent and the lack of clickbait is friendship and community. There's a really radical problem with the whole housing industry in the United States. We form these additions, housing additions, which is an addition to the city, and then they form a price range where they're radically different than the houses around them. Um, living in an exclusive neighborhood separates you. I mean, Warren Buffett's a good example. He's kind of lived in the same house, the same place all his life. This is community. He goes to the same restaurants. He does the same things all the time. He understands the value of social groups, community, and family. Um, if you constantly, like sending your children to university is a way to separate. I was explaining to a friend the other day that I went to university and I have, when I go back to my farm community friend, town of Orland, I got to wipe that out of my vocabulary, okay? Why? I can't, I can't tell people, 
like I had this guy ask me, why, why do I tell people I've been to 100 plus countries? I said, well, I'm not trying to separate myself. I'm trying to explain that I have exceptional experience and that I have credibility, okay? And that they, they when you get, um, there's a pandemic of obesity right now on the planet, and this is causing people not to fit in, okay? And um, big problem. Fine dining is not really a good thing. It's an exclusive thing that says that I can afford to go fine dining. You should go to restaurants to be part of a community of a restaurant, not just to eat. If the only reason you're going to a restaurant to eat, you might as well eat at home. This, guy, this kind of thing is all business. We have been emotionally, society has turned into a business where they, the corporations are controlling our minds. They go through Starbucks and get, to pay $6 for a coffee at a drive through Starbucks is the opposite of having intelligence. Okay, It's just no common sense. You can go through McDonald's for a dollar and get a, a thing. McDonald's is meant for convenience. Starbucks should be a place where you go for social life. If you're going to pay $5 for a thing, they better darn well give me social life. But overly fat people, anybody that's highly deviant, like way too many tattoos, t things, they're trying to separate from the group and they're not trying to be community. You got to, when you're trying to choose your community, you got to be real careful with the devious. Maybe I like wild women. I don't, they don't like me anymore because when I was with wild women, I was highly dysfunctional, radically different. I, I, I was a rogue, right? But they, I still like them, right? Text message. Text message generation doesn't have the eye contact. It does, you can't hear their voice. These cause a lot of angry things because we can't read by the tone of their voice what they're saying. Um, in the future, I hope that we go to the thing like Star Trek where they just look at the, the screen pops up and they're talking to each other on the screen. I hope all conversations are that way and this idea of text messaging goes away. Um, they don't believe they need to say hello when they walk into a room. The opposite of community. If you don't believe that, uh, like if you walk into a room with one person in there and you don't say hello to them, if, if, I, if a person walks into my room and they don't say hello to them, I, sometimes I'm waiting to test. If they have no use for people, this is a very sociopathically insane person. We must have common decency. This is the common decency, mutual respect is community. Uh, people, family, friends, and children must have a pri pri priority. We must have a priority for people. Among When I meet somebody and they're on a buying trip and I'm sitting there and say, hey, let's go get some coffee. And they say, well, I got to go buy this. I got to go buy a TV. I sit there and I go, I know their priorities. Buying things to entertain themselves is more important. It's kind of like a mental masturbation. They're going to go get that TV and masturbate to the TV. Not literally. Their TV is they're masturbating their brain. There's people that are constant masturbation in their brain with analysis, paralysis, masturbation in the brain, playing on the smartphone. They are, we got Generation Z that has no capacity to talk to other people because the only entertainment, the whole brain, the, the phone is controlling the brain. No thing, they're not controlling their phone. The phone is, the phone is a tool. <laughs> the, 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 Mark Zuckerberg and these guys know how to control your brain. And they've got it down to a science. Uh, religions are often excluding and including. A, a religion is a specific moral thing, and it shouldn't include anything and everything. If it does, it's not really a religion. It's just a game, and they want money or something like that. But uh, it should be welcoming to anybody. On the other side is uh, uh, if you're not morally wanting to be a good person, you should be shunned from a religion. Uh, the fear of the sun. What a problem. Ridiculous. People won't go out in the sun because they're afraid of the sun. That's opposite of going for a walk five times. It's not the sun that's causing cancer, guys. It's all the chemicals that are in the air. If you're living in a city full of carbon monoxide and your density is 15,000 people per square foot, you're dying because of the exhaust fumes and all the pollution from the city. Leave the city to be healthy. If you really want to be live for a long time, you got to go outside these highly densely, densely, but you know, but they they have proved that in the blue zones, people live longer when they have community, friendship, long-lasting friendship. 
It's the number one thing to living long. Medical problems are causing people to uh, not leave their house because the doctor says, take it easy, don't do anything. Do the opposite. If you're sick or mental or something, it's just so, you'll be cleaned in nature and you'll be cleaned in the nature of human community. That's what solves the problem. Community mindset is when a person leaves the house three to ten times a day. That's all the solution is. That's all you got to do is just leave the house three to ten times a day and walk and look to people, talk to people, interface. And if you see in their eyes that you're offending them, learn. Learn how to look at the eyes and realize. Don't revel in the fact that you irritated somebody. People are reveling in this. They, 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 they brag about being a... Uh, I had a guy brag to me about being a troll, and I go, you're evil. I mean, to, to want to hurt somebody is evil, okay? People think I hate dogs. I don't hate dogs. I love dogs. I don't love anybody that would think that um, a, a dog is – I've got this litmus test I keep building up. One is, can you t explain to me how an internal combustion engine in – do you understand – do you like – MSNBC, because this is a very deviant um, news thing that is not balanced even a little. Yeah, and then uh, one of them would be is, when would, I, I could ask a question, when, when do we have a right to kill a dog? If we don't have a right to kill a dog that's biting children or something, we don't um, execute these dogs that are dangerous. If we don't have that right, that there's always a salvageable thing for a, a dangerous animal. Um, that's insanity, okay? Um, if there's no balance, in the, there, we need an adult population, right, that looks at the world in an adult way, not a child thing, anything goes. It's like these safe zones for universities. That's ridiculous, okay? If you don't like where you're at, go someplace else. That's one of the greatest benefits of the United States is you can migrate anywhere in the United States. Not everybody has that ability. Um, uh, walk in groups, not alone. Humans are social animals. Without each other, they will become extinct. I'm going to repeat a couple of these sentences. Humans are social animals. Without others, we will become extinct. When people do not want two or more children, it's the end of community, family, and the human race. Right now, we got a population. Uh, the white population is uh, going to be extinct in I don't know how many years. Uh, they're having almost, as a world group, we have like 1.7 children, meaning that it'll slowly dissipate until there are no white people. Um, the Muslim thing are having like three or four kids. The Latinos are still having three or four kids. Um, the, I, I just read an article where the Jewish said we're going to populate and they're going to have three or four children because this is smart. Um, if you don't want to have family, in a way, you don't want community. And, and a person, when they become so selfish that they, they don't see the value of family and community, there's some drastic problems on the planet. Okay, If we don't want to be part of a family, if we don't love the family, if we don't think, yeah, we could have had a bad family, but that doesn't mean that you can't change your stars. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham, promoting community. <laughs> I'm writing this book, The Philosophy Of, and I'll be publishing it pretty soon. I'll be doing a series about, I don't know, 10 or 20 chapters in each thing. I'm debating. They're going to be a little easy book, easy to read books. And anybody that is a Patreon, I'm going to try to send a book to them for free. Okay, because it's not going to cost that much, maybe $10. To send it to each person, and you know, you know, you only got three months before I have enough money at five dollars, the minimum before I have it. So, if you want to get these new books and you want to get become part of my friendship group, get on uh, Zoom and let me see your eyes, let me hear your voice. Uh, I I really see that people that uh, don't understand the value of listening to the tone of voice. People, one of my friends, Cliff, said, Andy, when you're making videos, you're always smiling. I said, because I'm a happy guy. Uh, I didn't. I got up every day, and I get, I'm, I'm a good boy. I do my I, – I work real hard to avoid the temptation to do anything that would not 
would make me or another person feel weak. But I make these videos to change people, to let them see another world where maybe they are doing. I'm not right. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the world. People get really angry, write me two pages letters. And uh, my friend Wade said, I, I can't wait till I get hate mail. And I said, why? Because that person sits there and thinks I'm talking directly to you. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to the world. Life is good, guys. Become a Patreon and then get my books for free. And you can be on the on thing. And we'll talk about anything and everything. Anything and everything is the value of community. Talking about everything and anything is community. It's not being saying, well, what is the subject? I, I, I'll ask a girl out. And if she says, where are we going? I, I, I say, oh, I, I might be real rude and say Taco Bell. I think men should take women out to Taco Bell as their first thing. Because if it depends on where we're going, whether we're going on a date, it's a no-win situation. You're not going to form a relationship. You're not going to have a friendship. Friendship is when people get together and they don't care where they're going. <laughs> okay. okay, be part of a community. Join, be a regular restaurant. Go for a walk three to eight times a day. Walking is part of nature. 